Hi everyone, this is James, and I'm making this video sort of a, an insight video, sort of a tutorial, sort of a demonstration. Um, it's for a user on my Facebook page who needed some help with kind of setting up maybe simulating robotic movement in Unity. So I'm going to go ahead and just pull over the web player here. We can kind of see that it's just real simple. Um, it's just a GUI slider and um, you can kind of move this quote unquote robot around and you can also swivel his arm. So there's a lot more detail I could have done like swiveling, rotating the end and uh, maybe like a rotation down here on the arm too as well but the principles apply that I'm going to demonstrate and show here so you'll be able to basically rotate and translate any of these things on your own and I guess teaching that principles the important part so let's just dig into this and um, as usual here I have a unity project and um, let's scoot this out of the way and I'm going to explain kind of how the things are set up in here and this little robot um, and this will be zipped up in an archive and it'll be put into the video description here on YouTube uh, for download and you'll be able to play with this exactly as it is right here so for starters I have a directional light in the scene um, just my own choosing uh, it's supposed to be the sunlight or daylight there's a ground plane and I just created that game object create other and plane and I just slapped a uh, metal texture. I grabbed a couple of metal and concrete textures from Google and just slapped it on there and I think I set the tiling to like 3535. It was a unity plane so when I go in here and tweak the tiling I can tile the UVs inside of unity itself. So, um, a main camera, nothing really special about it. Um, I just kind of arranged it and moved it to where it gave the best view of the robot's uh, movement. Um, there's the robot model. We'll get to that in a second. You'll have your own robot model and it'll have its own materials and uh, other stuff in it. Um, robot control. This was a game object create empty. Um, then I went reset and named it what it's named right in there, robot control. And then I added my robot control script here in the scripts folder to it. Um, robot control has a value for what I did was I made it where you can control only the base you could turn it around and you could let's see here let me pull two sliders here slider value for the base and you can see it being updated there in the inspector okay you can also see that it kind of just resets itself and snaps back to zero when I let off the mouse and then you can see for the upper arm, there's a value changing in there. Okay. So that's what those values are. Um, there's the robot base, and then the robot's upper arm, and then a turn rate, which is basically a speed that the base would turn around, and then a speed that the arm would turn around. And so I separate, give them separate speeds so the arm could go be like 0.4 and turn much faster. Okay. There's a spotlight in here, and that's basically acting as sort of a fill light just to kind of fill in. You can see how it fills in some details that are in darkness. Okay, so let's dig into robot control here. I'm going to open up this script by double clip it, clip, clicking it. It's a Unity script, so very similar to JavaScript. And basically what we have in here in the script is, uh, so I'm going to explain this a little bit to help you guys be able to add your own robot parts into the script. So I have a value here for the base slider and um, it says it draws a horizontal slider um, control that goes from negative 10 to 10 and you saw that it does draw a GUI slider built-in unity GUI slider okay and this is the value of that slider okay <clears throat> and it's down here in function on GUI is that actual slider and here it is the GUI horizontal slider um, and we're saying that robot base slider value up here that's at zero which is a float basically means it can float anywhere between a range of values that you set you know um, 
we're saying that equals a horizontal slider, okay? And we're saying it is 25 pixels in X, 25 pixels in Y. That's where it shows up on the screen. That it is 100 pixels wide and 30 tall. So go ahead and tweak. Go ahead and tweak those values yourself and um, get it to look the way that you want. <clears throat> then we say, well, we'll also grab that uh, value in here, okay? And we'll want to say that value can range between negative 10 and 10. So you can slide it to the left and it'll go into the negative to 10, and you can slide it to the right and it'll go to the positive and 10. Okay? This is the robot base slider value. Okay? And I just named it that because it's actually controlling this lower platform base right here. It's actually just controlling this. So it's controlling the literal base of the robot. This one I called the upper arm slider value because this one is literally controlling this upper arm up here. Okay, this part inside of the model. All right, and it's also drawing a GUI slider, um, 25 pixels over an X from the left side of the screen, and then it's going to 80 down. And this is what um, let me bring in my play window. This is what pushes the other slider um, down here 80 pixels down this one's only 25 pixels down in Y so that allows our sliders to kind of be spaced out a little bit this is also using robot upper slider value and it's also setting the values to be clamped between negative 10 and 10 okay Here's the variable up top for the second horizontal slider, which is for the uh, upper arm. Okay. Then here we've created a couple of variables, robot base, robot upper arm, and they're just transforms. They're just things that uh, later in the script we want to take the object that we're going to plug in here and transform it or rotate it. And basically, that's what creates these two empty slots. Um, when you first apply the script or whatever, they will look like this and they'll say, hey, we're looking for a type of transform. We're looking for the robot's base, the robot's upper arm. So this is where you would control C, control V, and type in something like uh, end nozzle if we wanted to be able to control this rotation of this little end nozzle on here. We hit control S for save. We'd wait for a minute, and then of course the end nozzle would be able to be in here, and then we could, you know, plug in end nozzle right there, right? Okay, so that's how we would add the parts in via script that we could plug in over here. All right, base turn rate is the turn rate for this transform right here. It's, it's uh, how rapidly will it turn around? It's basically just another float, just any arbitrary number. Of course, if we get added our nozzle, we would go in here and instead we would write nozzle turn rate for this one. That way, we give ourselves a variable. Excuse me, yawning there, tired. Um, we give ourselves a variable to be able to adjust the speed at which the nozzle would turn around. Okay? So then we go into our update function right here. That's this entire function. This is, uh, you know, it's an update, so it's something that's occurring every single frame, every single second, constantly updated. So this is where we put in kind of the input code. So we say an update here. Let's take robot base, which is right here. This, let's take this transform, whatever we plugged in in the Unity Inspector for robot base. Okay, let's take that. Let's rotate it. Okay, and then we have some things inside of these parentheses right here. This is the rotation. We have an X value here in front of this comma, a Y value right here, and a Z. Okay, So we're saying for this rotation of the base of the robot, do nothing around X, do nothing around Z, 0 and 0. Everything that we want to happen on the base of this robot here would be in Y, i.e. platform base of the robot. Let me move the player out of the way. Would only rotate around Y. We don't want to rotate in X, and we don't want to rotate in Z for this particular part. Okay, so robot base rotate, nothing in X, nothing in Z, everything around Y. So what's going on here is we're saying in Y, 
we're saying in Y, take the robot base slider value, which is going to be based on this slider, where it, whether it's dragged left or right, take that value, multiply it times the base turn right, okay, which we set base turn right up here, which is a float in 5. So we're just saying, okay, so the rotation around Y will be that slider value, which is going to update between negative 10 and 10, depending on your slide it, and we're going to multiply it times the turn rate. Okay, so this is how we're basically adjusting the speed of the turn when you drag the slider, okay? That's that base turn rate. Same exact thing we're doing right here for upper arm, doing the same thing. So for the nozzle, um, we'd control C that, and we'd paste in this value for the nozzle right here, and we'd have robot in nozzle rotate, okay? And instead of robot upper arm slider value, we would have added in robot uh, in nozzle, right? We could say something like that. So that would be our variable for the float to control that. And we would put that in here. And, uh, <clears throat> something I see here I didn't update in the script are these turn rates the nozzle the robot in nozzle should use the nozzle turn rate the robot upper arm should use the upper arm turn rate and the robot base should use the base turn rate okay and hit control s to save those out so you can see how we just keep adding the same elements for each thing in this section up here the variables for all the sliders three elements the transforms for each part we're moving, three elements. The speed at which we want to separate for each part, each have a separate its own speed, three. Down here, the actual rotation of those objects in the update function, there's three sections, okay? Down here in this part of code, in the update, um, we would take robot, in, it's a very long variable name, right? The nozzle value and set it to zero. So what's going on down in this if input get mouse button up? down here there's a little bit going on inside of the update function what that's saying is get mouse button up zero is left mouse button so it's saying you know when you're moving the slider you're clicking left mouse button down okay which would be mouse button zero and then when you're letting it up this is what would happen this is what would happen in here and we're saying reset these values for the sliders up here where you're dragging it to positive 10 or negative 10. Reset that back to zero when the mouse button comes up. And that's how we do that kind of neat thing where the slider snaps back to zero when you let up off the mouse, okay? Function on GUI, or on GUI here, is simply drawing our sliders, okay? So we have these values for our end nozzle right here, nozzle turn rate, the new robot end nozzle, but we're actually, if we go back in, and we click on it and we look we have the end nozzle there we have the nozzle turn rate a nozzle slider value up here we have everything we need for the nozzle but when we hit play we don't have a slider for the nozzle okay and it's also erroring out right now because it's saying we haven't assigned some variables to it and they are empty the upper, upper arms empty the base is empty just for demonstration purposes. So if we also want to draw another slider for the nozzle end, we just uh, do a lot of control C, control V, pasting and copying in here and just make sure that's updated. Okay. And then the other thing that we'll want to change in here is the value of Y for that slider. So I'll show you what I mean by that when we go back and hit play and our sliders show up. We wanted to kick that slider down and Y down here so it's below and not kind of overlapping the other one. Obviously we can move it down a little bit more. The, the uh, spacing's a little uneven. So now we've kind of explained how everything works in this script and how you can add in your own sliders and add in your own parts and add in rotation for each new part. So you could technically have a hundred robot parts in this script and plug them in and have speeds and sliders and adjustments for each part of the robot that you want to rotate or move. So 
the important part is looking at robot control now we have these parts we can plug in and we plugged in the in nozzle okay so at this point we want to plug in the upper arm which should be right there and we want to plug in the base of it which is right there okay now and your hierarchy I'm gonna move this aside some of your parts may be named differently or be different different uh, hierarchies and different parenting and all that but I'm gonna go in and show you that see we can see this was my platform base uh, the end nozzles here now the uh, pivot point on it when I switch it to local like that it should technically go local to the object but I, it's a little bit of a bug I'm having in there where I can't get the rotation to to uh, be local to the object and I don't know why that is but we'll dig into it in the Maya model and maybe come up with the solution to solve this okay I'll pull it back in nozzle so there's a grouping in there and I think that might be part of the reason so when you're working in your 3d app here's the model of this you'll want to definitely make sure that like you're parenting and grouping together the different things that you want to move and you're setting the pivot points in the proper place for that object. Um, for example, I'm going to hide some of it. This entire arm I wanted to be able to rotate and move by itself like this because this is where it would move on my robot. Okay. By default, the pivot for this group of objects would be here. Okay. So it's obviously undesired rotation. So what I ended up having to do is in Maya and I don't know your other software like Blender and stuff like that but you hit the insert key in Maya and then you can move the pivot point wherever you need it to be hit the W key again and my pivot point is now in the place that you know I wanted it to be okay so this uh, stuff dealing with mechanical parts that are going to rotate inter rotate with each other and things like that clearly the pivot points need to be in the proper places and um, I just showed you how to do that in Maya. It's not in the proper spot, of course, by default. You get undesired junk like that. So obviously the upper arm is separated and things are grouped inside of the arm. These are not combined meshes where you know you just select all of it and you go mesh, combine the geometry, and then it's all just one part. Um, we needed to keep the parts kind of separate so that things could rotate freely on their own you know each piece so I have a grouping of these pieces that move together I have a grouping of these pieces that move together and then um, I have a grouping of these pieces that move together and I'm gonna go into the outliner it's kind of what you would see inside of unity It's the same thing you can see my hierarchy in here okay and what I did if I wanted something inside of that hierarchy you know, I just drag it in it, and now that lower disk piece is in the hierarchy. Now, obviously, that's undesired. It should be outside of in its own hierarchy, but this is how I broke it up. I put upper arm here, and I grouped everything in the upper arm. Then there was lower arm, and I made sure the upper arm group was inside the lower arm group. Now you can see, uh, and then I put everything inside as a child of lower arm gear. If we looked at that, if I just selected lower arm, well, it's not including that gear down at the bottom and the pivot point's not in the right spot because I didn't adjust the pivot point on that. I put the pivot point on the root object on the gear. And I rotated and grouped everything underneath the gear. So your robot would be different depending on what parts need to interchange and need to move in that specific spot. <clears throat> so going back in Maya, we see the same... Um, hierarchy and everything so that's basically where in your robot control where you would you know drag in all your different parts so this project will be in there um, bundled up in a zip archive and hopefully this kind of just helps give a little bit of understanding how you can adjust values and rotate and tweak things and um, kind of get like a robotic simulation look all right have a good day